Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sporty's free webinar series. Uh, a crowded classroom tonight, which is wonderful to see. My name is Eric Radke, and on behalf of the entire Sporty's team, welcome. We are so happy you could join us tonight. Um, obviously, a very interesting topic. I'll be your facilitator for this evening. Your presenter will be Ryan McBride from ForeFlight, who, will, who we will introduce in just a moment. Um, so again, thank you for being here with us. To get a few housekeeping items uh, out of the way, I do wish to um, let everyone know that tonight's presentation in its entirety is being recorded and will be available for future unlimited viewing via the Sporties YouTube channel and also in our webinar archive that's available at sporties.com slash webinars. So if you do have to step away or if your audio glitches or you miss some particular point, do know that you will be able to come back at any future time and view the recording uh, over as many times as you'd like. We do have some time at the very end of the presentation set aside for some questions, although I'm sure many of your questions will be answered throughout the presentation. If you care to submit your questions, you can do so via the GoToWebinar software, and you could submit those, and we'll just be organizing those and, and categorizing, and we'll present those uh, to Mr. Ryan McBride, our presenter tonight, uh, again towards the end of the hour that we have allotted for tonight's presentation. So on to the topic at hand. For flight, advanced tips, getting the most out of aviation's top app. It's hard to believe that For flight is now more than 10 years old as a company. And it's very safe to say that not only did the iPhone and iPad technology help revolutionize the way we fly, but certainly For flight was at the forefront of this technolo technological revolution. They have a brilliantly simple uh, company mission statement, and that is making flight planning easier. And wow, have they done that. But not only have they done that part, uh, but they have just reimagined everything related to how we execute a flight and the perspective we can gain from the visuals. And just when you thought there was really nothing more uh, that could make this app more usable, um, to make our flying safer, more enjoyable, all those things make us more thoughtful on how we go about our flying. Uh, with each update, uh, we're getting more and more of this creativity. And the man behind that, uh, the man behind the curtain, so to speak, certainly part of the very talented team at ForeFlight. We are very pleased to have with us tonight Mr. Ryan McBride, who is the lead product designer at ForeFlight and also a pilot, uh, of course, you would expect that, um, because again, how, how creative and how useful so many of these new tools that they continue to come up with, um, uh, you know, how they again benefit us in our everyday flying. So with that, without any further ado, let's get to the topic at hand, and I'm very pleased to welcome and introduce Mr. Ryan McBride. Ryan, thank you so much for being here tonight. Take it away, the floor is yours. Thanks, Eric. Hello, everyone, uh, happy to be here. Uh, welcome to ForeFlight Advanced Tips and Tricks. So this is going to be a presentation that dives a little deeper into some of the uh, features within ForeFlight Mobile. And by the end of this presentation, I hope that you all come away with a better sense of some of the features in various phases of flight, from pre-flight pre, pre planning to in-flight use, um, that are going to make your life as a pilot a little bit easier and a little bit more efficient. Um, as Eric mentioned, uh, my name is Ryan McBride. Uh, I lead the product design team at ForeFlight. So my team is responsible for making all of the features within ForeFlight easy to use, easy to understand. Uh, I'm also a pilot. I did my flight training at the University of North Dakota, did my training there, and then ended up uh, getting a bachelor's degree in, in user experience design from Michigan State University. So at ForeFlight, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to combine my passion for both aviation as well as product design. Today, we're going to dive into uh, a couple different areas of the product. I'm first going to give you a brief overview of ForeFlight, the company. Uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, we have been around for about 10 years. Um, hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, and then we're going to dive into flight planning and filing specifically. There's a lot of tips and tricks that are going to make your life as a pilot easier when you're planning flights or filing flight plans in ForeFlight. And there's a lot of benefits to filing through ForeFlight as well. I'm going to walk you through some of those, some of those benefits. 
Then we're going to talk about tips for in-flight use. So there's obviously a ton of functionality in the product that's meant to be used in flight. I'm going to highlight some of my favorites and give you some shortcuts uh, and tricks to getting the most out of the application when you're flying with it. And then finally, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you some resources on learning more about ForeFlight. Um, there's a lot of features in there, and there's many, many ways to learn about the app and become more uh, efficient with using the product and more comfortable using the product. And so we'll dive into that as well. So a bit about the company. Uh, ForeFlight was founded in 2007. It was founded by Tyson Wise, the current CEO, and Jason Miller, the current CTO. Uh, Tyson and Jason met online, actually. And they came together uh, both as pilots to build a product on the iOS platform, meaning I I iPhone and iPad. And Jason and Tyson really saw the potential that the iPad and the iPhone had for transforming aviation. Uh, when the company launched, it launched on iPhone first. Um, the iPad hadn't come out yet. Uh, so they built an app, a simple app for viewing weather and doing basic flight planning on the iPhone. But it wasn't until the iPad that came out in 2010 that the company really, really took off. And we've been growing uh, ever since then. We have customers all over the world, uh, general aviation pilots, military pilots, airline pilots, uh, Department of Defense, Coast Guard, everywhere. Uh, folks are using ForeFlight in every capacity of flying you could think of. And we pride ourselves on building the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. And we also pride ourselves on something we call the fanatical pilot support team. Everyone on the support team at ForeFlight is a pilot. Uh, most are instrument rated, CFI, CFII, and they're all ForeFlight experts. And they're available 24-7 to walk you through any questions you have or show you new features or how to do something. And I'm going to give you some information at the end of the presentation on how best to contact our support team. We're proud to say we've been the number one selling aviation app since 2010. So let's dive into flight planning. We're going to talk a little bit about different areas of flight planning today. The first area I'd like to walk you through is performance profiles. In ForeFlight, in order to get good numbers out of ForeFlight, meaning good fuel burn calculations, good time estimates, that sort of thing, we have to put good numbers into ForeFlight. And we do that uh, in many ways, but the most important way is by using a performance profile. If you've been flying with ForeFlight recently, you're familiar with the flight plan drawer. If you tap on the FPL button in the map view, the little flight plan drawer comes down and you can start entering your routes. There's two areas of this flight plan drawer I want to call out today that are super important. The first is this top left button. This is the aircraft button. By tapping on this button, you're presented a menu and you can add aircraft into the system. In the example I have on screen here, I've only entered one aircraft and so that's all I see in the list. But if I had multiple aircraft, I could tap the plus button there and add as many multiple aircraft as I wish into the, into the four flight. You'll notice in this view, there are two fields that are yellow in color. This is four flight telling you, hey, these are important things. You need to fill these things out. And those two fields are first, the tail number for the aircraft you're adding. It's important to add the tail number because that's how four flight identifies that aircraft as a unique aircraft in the system. But the second one is the aircraft type. Once you enter the aircraft type code, ForeFlight can actually automatically populate lots of information about your aircraft, and it can suggest performance information to you. So make sure you enter both the tail number and the aircraft type code first when setting up an aircraft, because it's going to save you time later on. But once you've entered an aircraft, the next button underneath there is the profile selection view. And this is where we tell ForeFlight the performance profile we plan on flying on any given flight. So what is a performance profile? Well, in ForeFlight Mobile, there are three types. There's the basic performance profile, which is available to all customers. There is the by altitude performance profile, which is available only to Performance Plus customers. And then there's the ForeFlight performance profile, which again is available only to Performance Plus customers. I'm gonna walk through the differences between each of these profiles today. We'll start with the basic profile. The basic profile allows you as a user to define an airspeed, fuel burn rate, and climber descent rate for climb, cruise, and descent phases of flight. And we do that by tapping on the pro performance profile button, tapping into the profile menu, and at the bottom of the menu is an area called custom performance profiles. This is where you as a user can store all of your profiles that you like to use. To create a new one, I can tap the add custom performance profile button, and I get a form. And you can see it allows me to define my climb, cruise, and descent information. 
I can give it any name I want, and then I can save it. So that's it. That's a basic profile. And for many customers, that's enough performance granularity that they need. Uh, but many customers demand more granularity in their performance calculations. As you know, performance of an aircraft changes a lot with altitude. Uh, and so we've built in a couple different new types of profiles available to Performance Plus customers in order to give you even more accurate calculations. The first one is called the By Altitude Performance Profile. This is available only in the Performance Plus subscription and it is user customizable. What the By Altitude Profile does is it's exactly the same as the basic profile in that it allows you to define climb, cruise, and descent characteristics for your aircraft. But crucially, it allows you to define those for any altitude. So you can set up your aircraft's performance at 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, as high as you want. In order to create a uh, by altitude profile, you actually have to go online to forflight.com and log in with your forflight subscription. And once you do that, you can navigate to the aircraft section. You'll see your aircraft there. And you can fill out the by altitude profile. You can fill out as many altitudes as you want, or you can fill out just a few, like 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, and ForeFlight will actually interpolate across those altitudes when it's giving you your performance ca calculations. And those by altitude profiles will show up in that same custom performance profile section, the same area that the basic profiles show up in. Okay, so that's basic and by altitude. The third type is the performance, pro the ForeFlight performance profile. The ForeFlight performance profile has the absolute most accurate calculations built in. And the reason this is the case is the ForeFlight profile defines your climb, cruise, and descent, not just at any altitude, but for any temperature deviation. And it even includes weight change as you're burning fuel across your route. The ForeFlight performance profiles are not user customizable or user creatable in the same way that the basic and by altitude profiles are, uh, but they're actually provided to you through the subscription, through the Performance Plus subscription. So once you've entered an aircraft with a type code, as long as we have the performance profiles, which are sourced, the, the performance information itself is sourced from the manufacturer. As long as we have the profiles for that aircraft, you'll see those profiles here automatically. There's nothing you need to do. And you can select them uh, with uh, the checkbox in the menu. Uh, you, you may recognize these profiles uh, for a different aircraft. They're based on the same performance charts you might see in the POH for the airplane. Uh, once you've selected that performance profile, ForeFlight will use it when calculating. It'll take into account the forecast winds, the temperature deviation, how much fuel you're going to burn along the route, and give you even more accurate numbers. I mentioned you can't customize these profiles in the same way as basic and by altitude, but you can do what we call performance profile biasing. If you tap the View button uh, next to any profile that you're using, you'll get a menu that looks like this. And in this menu, it tells you for this profile, here's the climb model it's using, here's the cruise model it's using, and also the descent model. But you'll see there's a model adjustment section. If you go and fly a flight uh, with the four flight performance profile, and you see that your aircraft burned, let's say 5% less fuel than four flight told you you were going to, after a few flights, you see, you see that consistently. You can actually go into the profile here and bias that fuel flow by 5%. So four flight will take that bias into account and apply it to the next time it calculates a flight using that profile, which is really handy. So it's a way to tweak the profile to your specific aircraft. I want to talk about another uh, feature that's available in our Performance Plus subscription, which is recommended routing. ForeFlight today can actually take your aircraft performance profile, whatever it is, whichever one you've selected, look at your route, look at the wind and temperature aloft forecast, and generate one fuel and time optimized route. And we call that the recommended route. The recommended route is accessible under the route advisor in ForeFlight Mobile. That's this button here along the right hand side. You may have used this before. If you open it up, you'll see there's a variety of different routes that are visualized here in list form on the left and then graphically on the right. This bottom section might be familiar to most customers. You can see recently ATC cleared routes between your departure and your destination. If you scroll down in that list, there's a lot of other options too. Airway routes, if there's any FAA published preferred routes from your departure to destination, those will show up here as well. All of the calculations, the time calculations and the fuel calculations along the right hand side for each of those routes, that is the real time estimate based on your aircraft performance profile you've selected and your ETD, that that's what you would actually perform at if you were to fly that route. But the one I wanna talk about today is the recommended route. That's at the top here. 
the recommended route, again, is a fuel and time optimized route to get from A to B at your ETD based on your aircraft and the profile you've selected. If you tap on the recommended route, ForeFlight will highlight it for you on the map automatically so you can see how it looks in comparison to the other routes that maybe have recently been flown. And you can then select that route by tapping the Select Route button at the bottom of the screen. And ForeFlight will automatically populate that route into your flight plan drawer. Now, this is a pretty short route here. Um, in order to give you a better example of the uh, sort of impact of recommended routing, I want to show you an example of a real-world flight that was flown recently. This is a cross-country flight that was flown by a Gulfstream jet. It was flown from Los Angeles to New York. This is a real flight that was filed and flown as filed. Uh, at the same time, when this flight plan was filed and this airplane was departing, we ran an optimized, uh, sorry, a recommended route for this route. We took the same aircraft, the same profile, and we ran a recommended route. And that recommended route actually came out looking like this, quite a bit different. Um, and it really, if you go back and forth between these two options here, the, the difference is quite stark. And we get a lot of questions, you know, why do these recommended routes look the way they do? And one of the easiest ways to see why a recommended route might look so different like this is to turn on the winds aloft layer in ForeFlight Mobile. And when I do that in this case, it becomes much clearer why ForeFlight is recommending we go up north. Because ForeFlight calculated that based on the winds aloft at our, our climbing and our cruise altitudes, it's actually going to save us time and fuel if we spend a little bit more time to go up north and catch those tailwinds and ride those into New York. So that's the power of recommended routing. Another new feature that was just released in ForeFlight 10.1 that's related to routing and the route advisor is something we call route advisor constraints. If I go back to our route advisor view here, at the top of the screen is a altitude, actually two altitudes, a minimum and maximum altitude. By default, the maximum altitude that ForeFlight is going to recommend a route for you is your aircraft service ceiling, which again is pre-filled for you most times if you enter your type code for your aircraft. But you can actually customize these constraints. You can tell ForeFlight, I only want you to recommend a route for me between 3,000 and 10,000, something like that. Well, let me give you an example. Uh, so if I tap on this uh, altitude here, this 0 to 16,000, I get a view that allows me to change my minimum and maximum altitude. So I can tap into it uh, and I can change it. So for example, I could so select a different maximum altitude, change my 16,000 to maybe 12,000. And when I go back to my main route advisor view, my recommended route has now changed because ForeFlight recognizes I can only go up to 12,000. It's now rec rec not recommending a route at, at 10,000 between my departure and destination. So it's gonna take those constraints into account. The next feature I'd like to talk about is fuel planning. Uh, we do fuel planning in ForeFlight on the flights view. That's the same place we can get weather briefings, nav logs, file flight plans. Uh, before we move into the flights view, which again is this little button right here, um, I just want to highlight that if you can always send a flight from the maps view to the flights view. If you've planned a route on the maps view and you're now ready to file it or brief it, you can send it to the flights view. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. But let's dive right into the flights view first. Well, when I'm in the flights view, I get a view that looks like this. And I have a departure, a destination, an aircraft, a performance profile, a route advisor. I can scroll through all of these things, but there's a fuel section as well. You can see the fuel section at the bottom there. And the fuel section is where I can modify information about my, my, my fuel policy. So I, for example, I can select different types of fuel policies, minimum fuel, maximum fuel. I can tell ForeFlight, I have this much amount of fuel in the tanks. And I can enter that, and ForeFlight will calculate how much fuel I need for the rest of my, uh, my flight. I can say, I, I need to land with this amount of fuel. And I can tap on fuel at landing, and ForeFlight will generate how much fuel I need to start with in order to land with that amount of fuel. You can customize taxi fuel, extra fuel, reserve fuel, and ForeFlight will automatically calculate all the numbers in the rest of the form for you, which is really handy. So this is our fuel policy uh, feature in the flights view. It's something I, I'd, I'd recommend spending a bit more time with, um, it's really, really handy, and it's going to do a lot of the work for you uh, automatically. I mentioned you can send a flight from the maps view to the flights view, and you can do that if you've planned a route on the, on the maps view here, and you're now ready to file it or do, do some fuel planning like I just showed you. You can tap the send to menu in the flight plan drawer and select send to flights, and it's going to copy it over to the flight draw, drawer for you automatically, create a new flight, and you can go from there. It saves you a lot of time. Let's talk about uh, flight plan filing. 
uh, you can actually file IFR and VFR flight plans in ForeFlight. You can file, open, amend, cancel, close flight plans directly through the application, uh, which is really, really handy. You can do it on iPad or on iPhone. Uh, but we often get questions from customers, well, that's cool, but why would I want to do that? And so today I'm going to show you a few reasons why it's a really good idea to file through ForeFlight. Again, we file on the flights view. Here I am on the flights view. And I can go down to the proceed to file button after I've filled out my flight information. And when I do that, I get an ICAO flight plan form. And when I'm ready to file the flight, I can tap the file button. Now this form, we pre-filled for you based on your aircraft you selected for your flight, based on your route, based on all of your aircraft type codes, everything. We pre-filled it for you and you can file it automatically. Or you can tap on any one of these values and change any one of them. So you can always modify your ICAO flight plan at the point of filing, which is a really nice flexibility to have. But ForeFlight really helps you file a bit smarter. Uh, and it does that by automatically setting up your aircraft ICAO codes. When you add an aircraft to ForeFlight, ForeFlight can automatically set up all of your codes for you automatically. ForeFlight can also send you what we call adverse condition alerts. Once you've filed, if, the, uh, infer if there's a, a meet, uh, uh, a TFR that pops up or an airmet or segment that pops up between your estimated time of departure and the time um, that you filed, we're going to push notify you of uh, that event right to your device. It can also send you expected routing. So ForeFlight interfaces with what's called the FAA ERAM system, which is the computer network that the FAA uses to assign and generate flight plans. And so when you file, ForeFlight can send you that flight plan autom automatically so you have it before you even call up clearance, which is neat. And then finally, and this is new in the latest release of ForeFlight, for, we can actually notify you of your expected departure clearance time as well. So if there's a, a ground delay for whatever reason at any airport and it looks like your flight plan is going to be subject to uh, that delay, ForeFlight will push notify you uh, and email you of that information. And I'll show you exactly um, how each of these features is valuable. So uh, regarding the setting up of the aircraft ICAO codes, once you've entered an aircraft in ForeFlight using
uh, for your flight plan that you filed, then it's going to send those to you over email as well, which is really, really handy. So again, th these are just features that make filing with ForeFlight a lot smarter. Um, it's going to give you a lot more information. You're going to be a lot less in the dark about what's going on with your flight plan behind the scenes. Next, I want to talk about some tips for in-flight use with ForeFlight Mobile. And the first one is a feature that was released in the last version, uh, and it's an update to our search functionality. So in ForeFlight, uh, previous to the last version, you could enter different things in the search field, routes or waypoints, but we've actually enhanced that. We've made it a lot smarter, and you can search for a lot of different types of things in search now. I'm gonna show you a few examples. If I tap into the search view here, I can type something like an airport code, like Oshkosh, and I'll get the airport. I can type a city name. I'll get all the airports in that city. I can type an airport code and then in a procedure type, and ForeFlight will show me all the procedures that uh, belong to that airport, and I can tap on them to open them up in full screen. I can even now enter street addresses, which is really handy. You can enter any street address. ForeFlight has a, a street address a system built into it, and you can add street addresses as waypoints, and once you've tapped on them, you can add them to your route or go direct to them. Uh, so lots of really handy uh, features there. And it's worth noting this search functionality isn't just on the map. You can access it in different views of the application. For example, the airport view as well. Uh, so I'd recommend playing with it, typing things in it that you're interested in. You can almost think of it as like a little, little mini Google search for, for your for your ForeFlight app. It's, it's a lot smarter and it tries to recognize things that you're looking for. So give that a try. The next feature I want to talk about is profile. This is a feature that's been in the application for a little while now. Um, but has some interesting uh, interaction capabilities that I think a lot of customers might not be aware of. So the profile view is in the Maps Flight Plan for. Uh, we're on the Edit tab now, but if I tap on the Profile view, I get a profile. And this shows me terrain and airspace along my route. And I can drag this slider to see how high I'm going to need to be to make it over the highest point in my route. But it's interactive, so I can pinch and zoom into any area. I can tap on things like airspace, and the map will center on that airspace for me automatically. Tapping away from the airspace brings me back to my previous zoom level. You can zoom all the way in on any piece of information you're interested in. So for example, if I was interested in seeing, hmm, where is this, where is this peak? I can tap and drag, just press and hold on the profile and you can see a dot and that dot corresponds to the map as well. So I can then zoom in and see exactly where that peak in my profile is located on the map itself, which is really handy. And finally, profile view works uh, with the ruler as well. So you can take the ruler by pushing two fingers at the same time on the map, and you'll see it's actually measuring not the terrain along my route anymore. It's measuring ter terrain between where I put my two fingers. And I can, again, move that dot and see where the terrain is along that ruler that I placed on the map. So the profile really works in conjunction with the map, and it's fully interactive. Um, so we built these features to really work together seamlessly. And I'd, I'd, if you haven't played with these sort of features before, I'd recommend checking it out. It can be really handy. Next, I want to talk about what we call synthetic waypoints. Uh, synthetic waypoints are just a ge generic term for a waypoint that's not a true waypoint, meaning not like a published uh, intersection or a published waypoint, um, but uh, custom waypoints that you can add to the, to the map. And there's two in particular that I want to talk about today um, that might be really, really handy. Uh, when we're in the uh, flight plan drawer here, uh, I can actually tap on any bubble and I can do a lot of things with it. But the one I want to talk about today is a long track offset before. This allows me to insert a synthetic waypoint along a tr track at a certain distance before any uh, waypoint. So I've entered, for example, 10, 10 miles before SFO uh, right there. It's that easy. And I can tap on it and delete it. So track, a long track offset before. Another one is uh, VOR DME radial notation. If I wanted to enter a waypoint at the Oakland VOR, at the 130 radial, at 10 DME, I'd enter those three separated by slashes. So VOR slash radial slash DME, and it's gonna enter a waypoint at that location, which is really handy. So there are two features uh, for building up sort of fake waypoints um, that I think a lot of pilots might find useful, a long track offset and radial DME. Finally, I want to talk about direct to. Uh, there's a lot of ways to go direct to in ForeFlight. I, I want to show you two that I think are really handy. When we're going direct to a waypoint, we can do that a couple different ways in the application. Uh, if I'm flying along here, I can tap on a waypoint and I can select direct to, for example, go direct to SFO. But another useful feature is tap on the leg that you want to go direct to and select direct. 
And you can see what it did there is it took me from, it removed the waypoints that were prior to that waypoint and just took me direct to that waypoint. I can also go type a D and then a waypoint name in the search box. For example, D space waypoint name. And that will plot a route direct from my current position to any given waypoint, which is a really kind of quick shorthand notation for going direct anywhere really quickly, which is really nice. I'd like to talk a little bit about ownship tools as well. Uh, ownership tools are pieces of information that you can overlay around your current GPS position, which we call the ownership, um, to give you more information about where you are. And you can access these ownership tools under the settings menu. If I tap into settings and then scroll down, I see a couple different options here. Uh, I want to talk about these four today, extended center lines, distance rings, glide advisor, and track vector. Let's talk about extended center lines first. If I turn extended center lines on, I'm going to get uh, actually sort of pr protruded runways uh, that extend out from the center lines of any of the airports that I have in my route. Um, here's a zoomed in view of what that looks like. This is something I fly with all the time. Um, I think it's really handy to have it. It helps you situate yourself a little bit easier um, and it, it really enhances the situational awareness when you're coming into an airport. So that's extended center lines, something I highly recommend. Another one that I use a lot is distance rings. Distance rings is one option under extended center lines in that uh, settings menu there. And I can turn distance rings on. And when I do that, I get these rings that come out around my aircraft position. Uh, now, by default, they show um, the distances. And the distances they show depends on how far zoomed in or out you are. So for example, I could be at this zoom level here. And if I zoom out a little bit, I go from 5, 10, 25 to 10, 20, 50. I can zoom out a little bit more. I get larger distances. You can go all the way out to kind of a world scale and get 2,000 nautical mile distances if you want. That's the default behavior. Uh, but we can change this. We can change what distances are shown. And we can even switch from distances to times, which is some, the feature that I use a lot. And I want to show you how to customize these rings. So when we're in the settings view, which again is under the more tab under settings, I have a new option here, distance rings style. And uh, if I tap into that, I see a bunch of options. The first option is automatic. That's the default. That's distances, and it changes based on your zoom level. But you could switch this to always be a fixed distance, regardless of zoom level. Or you could change it to be time as well. So it'll show you rings 5, 10, 30 minutes out, or 10, 20, 60 minutes out. And that's based on your GPS ground speed. Um, so those are some customization options for those rings you might uh, try out. The next feature I want to talk about is Glide Advisor. This is a really useful safety feature. If I go into the settings menu and select Glide Advisor, Forkflight can actually plot out a dynamic ring. We actually call it an amoeba. It's sort of a, a blob that's always changing around your aircraft. And it's going to show you, based on your current GPS altitude, uh, where you could uh, glide to in the event of an engine out situation. So how Glide Advisor works is it looks at the Forkflight terrain data database, the global terrain database we have. It looks at the winds aloft forecast information. It looks at your aircraft's glide performance, which you have to add to the system, and which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And then it looks at your GPS altitude. And based on all of these things, it draws out a realistic range, a glide, a glide distance uh, based on wherever you are. So again, in order to use Glide Advisor, we have to enter our aircraft's glide performance. And we can do that under the aircraft section on the more tab. If you scroll down in, in an aircraft, there's a glide performance section. You can tap into that, and you can enter your uh, aircraft's glide speed and its glide ratio, which are uh, two pieces of information you can find in your POH. Uh, if your POH doesn't define these in these same terms, you can always send us an email, which I'll get to at the end of the presentation, and our uh, support team can walk you through finding that information. But once you've entered that, if you turn on the glide advisor, and you have that aircraft as your currently selected aircraft in your flight plan drawer, ForeFlight's going to plot out the the, the glide advisor on the map. And it's smart. So it's looking right now at all the terrain around me. It's looking at my GPS altitude. It's looking at the, the winds aloft forecast. And you'll notice here, as I move into this area of terrain, the, the glide advisor knows where that terrain is. And it can actually bend and move around the terrain to show you where you're going to be able to make it to or not. So this is a really, really handy feature um, and something that a lot of customers uh, keep on when they're flying uh, in remote areas or over water or wherever. Some folks leave it on all the time. Uh, really handy to have. Another feature I'd like to talk about is track vector. The track vector functionality basically shows you where your aircraft is trending, where it's going to be in the future. And uh, that's in the settings menu, again, at the bottom, track vector. 
And when you turn track vector on, it's going to show you what we call a little worm, which is basically just a vector. And in this case, I'm turning right, and ForkLight's detecting that, so it sees I'm turning right. Now I'm turning back left, and the track vector shows a left turn now. Um, and in this case, my track vector is really, really short, but I can change the length of the track vector um, and change how far out uh, ForkLight is basically projecting where my aircraft's going to be. And I can do that under the Settings tab. If I go to More and then Settings and select Track Vector Length, I can tap into that and I have a lot of options. I can do it in time, meaning uh, seconds out from now or minutes out for now, or I can do it in set distances and nautical miles. So uh, play with these settings and uh, see which one is, is most useful for you. Well, it wouldn't be a, a tips and tricks presentation if we didn't talk a little bit about weather. Uh, and I'd like to talk about radar today. Um, there's a ton of weather products in the application. Um, there's a whole section of our pilot's guide uh, which is dedicated to weather. And we've done, we do dedicated presentations which talk about weather in depth. Um, in this presentation today, I wanna talk specifically about radar. And I wanna talk about three different radar options that are available to you in the application and when you might use those options. So we have different types of radar. We have composite radar, lowest tilt radar, and an additional four color radar option. I wanna walk you through what the differences are. So this is my uh, my layer selector on the map view. Uh, I can open up the layer selector with the button in the top left button in the map and I get this menu. And when I open it up, I, I can see at the top, I have two different radar options, radar composite and radar lowest tilt. And we get a lot of questions. What is the difference and when would I use either one? Uh, to kind of illustrate what the difference is, I need to kind of give you some background on how the next rad system System works uh, at a very high level. So here's a little diagram that shows a NEXRAD uh, radar system. And when the NEXRAD system goes out, it sweeps the sky in about three, in 360 degrees from about 0 0.5 degrees up to 19.5 degrees. So there's a beam going out uh, all around the station, but it's not just going out flat, it's going out at different angles. And this is really important because in order to pick up different types of precipitation in the vertical cross section of the atmosphere, the NEXRAD systems have to do that, that, angular, um, that angular scanning. The lowest angle here, the, the 0 0.5 degrees, we call that lowest tilt. Uh, that's, that's the general term for whatever precipitation, whatever reflectivity was returned at the lowest angle that that NEXRAD station went out, we call that the lowest tilt reflectivity. The composite reflectivity is the absolute worst case reflectivity, the most intense reflectivity that was returned across all of those angles. So two different types, lowest tilt and composite. What is the difference? Well, when a NEXRAD station is searching the sky uh, at different angles at, uh, all around it, um, obviously the amount of precipitation in the atmosphere varies uh, with altitude. And when you're using the product, you might wanna use lowest tilt when you are uh, trying to figure out what type of precipitation is likely hitting the ground. Because again, the lowest tilt precipitation is, is very low to the ground, the lowest angle. However, if you are in route, uh, flying from A to B, and you wanna know what the worst case scenario is along that route, what the, what the worst reflectivity is gonna be between you and your destination, that's where you wanna use composite. Because composite's gonna show you the worst case scenario across all the reflectivity that was returned amongst all those angles. So let me show you a, a visual differentiation between what these two products look like. So here we have, uh, we have composite on the left and we have lowest tilt on the right. And uh, it's pretty clear to see there's a lot of precipitation in the atmosphere, uh, especially along the outer sections of this storm that's not making it to the ground. And we know that because we see that difference between composite and lowest tilt. A lot of that precipitation was picked up amongst all the angles, but lowest tilt didn't pick a lot of that up. Um, so really useful to see the difference between what's in the atmosphere and what's hitting the ground. It's worth noting you can customize the radar in ForeFlight to make it look closer to your onboard radar system. If you're flying with ForeFlight and you want your onboard radar to look just like your ForeFlight mobile radar, there's a setting for that. It's in the settings menu on the map view. You can scroll down to uh, the four color radar section. And when you turn that on, essentially what ForeFlight does is it takes this beautiful representation of radar that we've spent a lot of time working on and perfecting 
Um, and it turns it into that, um, which isn't quite as pretty to look at, but uh, also matches most onboard radar systems. Uh, so that's a good way to have parity between those two systems. So that's a feature that's available if that's something that's important to you. Oh, I should, I should note before I continue, ADSB radar. Uh, ADSB radar is always composite. Uh, there is no lowest tilt broadcast for ADSB radar right now. I'm not aware of any plans for it in the future either. So right now it's important to note when you're looking at radar in ForeFlight that's coming in over ADSB, it's always composite. Let's talk about alerts now. Uh, ForeFlight can alert you to a lot of different pieces of information. And I wanna walk you through some of the alerts that are available in the app today. We can customize different alerts in ForeFlight under the More tab by going into the Settings section and tapping into Alerts. Uh, that's this action right here. And when I tap into Alerts, I have a bunch of different options that are available to me. Um, I can see all the alerts that are currently enabled under the General section here. And toggling them on means that alert type is now enabled. And if, if criteria is met to match that alert, it's going to alert you. Uh, at the top of the screen is the speak all alerts option. When an alert is triggered, it shows you the alert on the screen, but it can optionally also speak that alert to you. By default, it'll speak it through the iPad speakers, but if you're in flight, you can plug in your headset to the iPad or connect a Bluetooth headset to the iPad. And you'll actually hear the alerts right in your headset when you're flying, which is really cool. The first alert I wanna talk about is the sync rate alert. It looks like this, pretty self-explanatory. If your sync rate is approaching excessive levels on approach, ForeFlight's gonna alert you to that on the screen. And again, if you have a headset connected, you'll hear sync rate, sync rate as an alert. Another useful one is the 500 AGL callout on approach, really nice to have. You'll see that on the screen and also in your headset. I think one of the most useful alert types uh, in, in ForeFlight is the approaching and entered runway alerts. When you're approaching a runway, ForeFlight will tell you what runway you're approaching. And when you've entered it, it'll show you the runway that you've entered and how much distance is remaining between your current position and the end of that runway, which is really handy if you're doing, for example, an intersection departure. It's a nice sanity check on how much distance is remaining. And again, it'll speak it into your ear as well. You'll also get TFR alerts if you're upcoming on a TFR uh, and your course hasn't deviated around that TFR and the application thinks you're going to enter it. You'll get a TFR head alert. It'll allow you, it'll also alert you if you take off and sort of ascend or descend into that TFR as well. Another really useful feature is the destination weather frequency call out. As you're approaching a destination, uh, Forfly will automatically call out the ATIS frequency for any airport. It'll put it right up on the screen for you, um, which is really, really handy to have. We're working on a lot of features that allow pilots to get the information they need automatically in different phases of flight. Uh, without having to interact much with the application. And this is the first of, of many more to come. And then finally, our latest uh, alert, which is our terrain and obstacle alert system. When you're flying with ForeFlight in the latest version, it can alert you to any hazards that are coming up. It'll open up a box and allow you to automatically orient the map track up uh, and highlight those obstacles for you on the map. Let me go back, I wanna play that video once more. So in this case, I'm descending into Aspen and ForeFlight has noticed based on my aircraft trajectory in 3D space, there's terrain and obstacles ahead. And it's calculating where those obstacles are and if I'm gonna hit them. And it opens up that alert and then I can select show full screen and I get those obstacles in full screen with an automatic hazard advisor layer, which is toggled on for you automatically. So that's the terrain and obstacle alert system and that's out in the latest version of ForeFlight. It's something we spent a lot of time perfecting. It calculates your aircraft trajectory in 3D space, not just laterally. Um, and we think it's gonna be a really, really useful safety tool uh, for folks to have. It's worth noting, you can turn off any of these alerts. If there's alerts that you don't care about and you don't wanna be bothered with, you can always turn any of them off under the settings menu. So uh, that is a bunch of advanced tips and tricks that I, I hope you found useful. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about ways to learn more about ForeFlight Mobile. Uh, the, the best way is our pilot's guide. That's sort of a manual for the application. We update it with every application release. And it's available both on our website, if you go to foreplate.com slash support, uh, or it's available in the app itself. If you go to the documents tab along the bottom in the app, and then in the top right, select catalog and open up the ForeFlight section, you can download the, the pilot's guide to ForeFlight directly into the application and have it with you when you fly, which is really, really useful. 
We also have a variety of videos on our website. If you go to fourflake.com slash videos, we have uh, beginner courses, advanced courses. We have little five minute videos that walk you through every feature. We have a whole video library. So if you're interested in learning more about radar or about filing, you can type in the search box, so type in what you're interested in and Fourflight will show you videos that are relevant to that query. You can also get the latest info uh, about the product on our blog. It's blog.fourflight.com. Whenever there's product updates uh, or new things we think you should be aware of, um, those are always on our blog. Uh, and then the pilot support team that I mentioned earlier, again, all pilots, most instrument rated CFI, CFII, they're available seven days a week and they're available over email. So you can shoot them an email um, and they'll uh, be happy to walk you through anything over email, any questions you have or issues you're having. Uh, if you prefer phone support, you can also send them a, a phone number uh, if that's uh, pr preferable to you and they, they can give you a call in a time that's convenient for you. So that's a little bit about advanced tips and tricks for Fourflight. I hope you found it useful. Um, and uh, back to you, Eric. Thank you. Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, it looks like we have a few minutes to entertain some questions, so certainly invite anyone um, who still has some questions to certainly send those in. Um, Ryan, let me start with this. Uh, what is the, for those that are on or any of your ForeFlight users that have, uh, you know, kind of a brilliant new thought or idea for some cool new feature you could possibly add, what's the best way for them to submit that uh, over yeah, to great. ForeFlight? Great question. So, you know, we, we are a company of pilots, right? And we're, we're building a product that we ourselves as pilots want to use. And uh, well, we're building a product that we want all pilots to use and we want it to be useful for everyone. And so the number one thing that drives what we do, the updates we make, the features we build, the number one thing is customer input and customer requests. And we get them all the time. And the best way to request a feature in ForeFlight is to send it to this email, team at foreflight.com. And what happens is, uh, when you send that request in, our support team forwards that on to our product management team, and, and we look at that request, and um, if it's something we think we can do, then, then we work on it. Um, not, you know, it, we have a long sort of uh, priority list and roadmap, but uh, the, the things that we do are definitely shaped uh, in many ways by those customer requests. So please, yeah, send them to us. They're, they're helpful for us to know um, about what pilots find useful and what they want. And Ryan, would the would the same advice hold true if if someone were looking for a specific performance profile that's not currently in the library? Can they send in requests that that they would like to see populated? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are uh, a, a using a performance uh, profile for an aircraft and you, your POH has a profile that Fourth Lake doesn't list, please send us an email. Let us know what the aircraft type is. Any information you can send to us about that aircraft um, would be really helpful. Uh, and we're adding more performance profiles for hundreds of aircraft all the time. Um, and so, yeah, go ahead and send that to us. And, and the same holds true for other types of information. So, for example, uh, checklists. There's a built-in checklist into the product today. And uh, there are checklist templates that ForeFlight provides to help you set up your aircraft checklist a little faster. Um, if, you, if, if there's a checklist template uh, in, the, in, the, in the application that is for your aircraft, great. But if there's not, you can request that template be made for you at team at foreflight.com and any information you can provide about that aircraft checklist any uh, documentation or anything we can use that to um, to see if we can work on that now another follow-up to some of these cool new features that pilots might want to talk to you about um, I had a couple of attendees tonight asking if you are permitted or can uh, preview any cool upcoming features that we might see in the next several months yeah, I, I can't. Um, we generally don't talk about things that haven't been released yet. Um, but you know, one of the nice things about Fourflight Mobile is it's it's you don't have to go very long without seeing new stuff, right? Um, so our latest release, um, 10.1, uh, introduced a variety of new things: the expected departure clearance times and the um, the terrain and obstacle alerts, as well as a, a bunch of new functionality. Uh, a bunch of the new features we've released, like airspace and profile, have been really well received. And of course, we also just launched in Europe, <laughs> um, which was a, a huge, huge launch for us. Um, so uh, always working on new stuff. Um, and the best way to, to see see the latest stuff that's coming out is check out our blog, blog.forflight.com. Gotcha. Ryan, related to the uh, performance profiles, uh, if you could quickly review. So how does a user, again, um, check or investigate as to whether performance profiles are available for the particular aircraft that they are flying? Yeah, great question. So um, in order to, to see pre-populated performance profiles, those four flight profiles, uh, you'll need to be on a Performance Plus subscription. 
And uh, all you need to do is in your, in your aircraft view, under the More tab under Aircraft, uh, make sure you've entered your aircraft tail number and its type code. And when you enter the type code, uh, when you tap into that field, ForeFlight will show you all the type codes that we have, and it will show you under each type code how many profiles we have for each aircraft. So you can tap on a type code, um, and if it has profiles for it, you'll see those profiles under the Performance Profile Selection button on the flight plan drawer, the second button from the top on the left-hand side. Um, if, there, if you're a Performance Plus subscriber and you don't have performance uh, profiles available to you, your, your other option is to always create a custom profile, a buy altitude profile by going to foreflight.com, or again, send us an email with your aircraft and um, some information about what you're not seeing and what you expected to see, and our performance team can work on, on getting that information in the app. Brian, to kind of switching subjects for a second over to weather, um, had a couple of users talk or inquire about some of the basic differences between what they will see with respect to ADSB weather versus commercial Sirius XM weather? Yeah, uh, great question. So um, two different products, uh, both the application supports both. Um, ADSB and XM look a little different, uh, just visually. Um, ADSB has two different resolution modes. It has a, a regional resolution, then it has a, a wider range resolution. Um, the XM weather is going to be a little less blocky looking than the, uh, than the ADSB weather. The ADSB weather is definitely has a, a lower resolution to it. In terms of the information that you're receiving, um, it's generally very close, uh, and the uh, update frequencies are, are relatively close as well. Um, but the, the biggest difference in the display of the information is going to be um, just that ADSB is slightly lower resolution. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, um, if you're not interested in seeing in, uh, whether that's way out ahead of you, like on the other side of the country, and you're okay with an ADSB and solution, you know, red is red, right? Um, and uh, it, it, so the, the main difference is the resolution. And Ryan, as follow-up to that, um, a couple of user ask a couple of users asking about how you would get commercial Sirius XM weather with ForeFlight or on ForeFlight. Yeah, so um, there is uh, we, we support uh, one XM weather receiver uh, by XM, and it is called the SXAR1, and it's a little box and a uh, little white box that has a built-in battery, and you uh, basically bring it into your aircraft, and it connects to the iPad over Bluetooth and gives you XM weather. Uh, and not just weather, it can give you radio as well. So you can actually listen to radio. You can even tune the radio stations right through ForeFlight Mobile, which is really cool. Um, and that box is sold by XM, and they have a special ForeFlight subscription. Um, so there's the price of the box and then the, the subscription as well. Um, and again, that's sold through, uh, through, through, through XM. Ryan, another new topic, um, question from an attendee about your advice or recommendations or thoughts on how best to integrate ForeFlight web version um, with the ForeFlight application. Yeah, good, great question. That's not something we talked about today uh, just because of time, but for those who don't know, uh, we have a product that's called ForeFlight on the web. You can go to ForeFlight.com and log in. It's included with your subscription. There's no additional cost. And most of the things you can do in the app, you can do on your home computer. It's just a website. There's no software to install. Um, but one of the nice things about the web product is you can file flight plans there, get weather briefings, plan out routes, um, look at different types of charts and procedures and airport information. But all the planning you do, all the flights you do on the web, um, they sync to your iPad automatically. So as long as your iPad is on, is on, has an internet connection, if you have made a, a, a flight and saved a flight on Four Flight Web, it'll sync to your to your iPad automatically, and it'll sync to the, to the favorited flights uh, area. So you can literally plan a flight on your home computer, open up your iPad, um, and, uh, and and go out and fly, and know that that route's going to be there as long as it was on the internet. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, fourflight.com. It's a product that we're investing in. We're shipping a lot of new features every day on the web. Um, it's a product that I use all the time. And again, ForeFlight Web is the only location where you can enter by altitude profiles. So if that's something that's important to you, um, definitely go log into the website because that's the, the main way to do it. It's really that all the data entry is a lot easier with a mouse and keyboard, which is why we put it there. Ryan, related um, to those weather briefings in particular, um, a couple of attendees interested in knowing whether there's an official record that is logged or kept somewhere that a pilot is yeah. indeed getting a weather briefing or investigating the weather. Yeah, great question. So um, the the graphical briefing, the HTML briefing in ForeFlight Mobile, when you receive it, 
it uh, comes through uh, uh, Lidos flight service. And uh, how it works is when you request the briefing from the application, uh, ForeFlight takes your route and it sends the request uh, from uh, the, the application through the ForeFlight servers to Lidos. And they return uh, all the weather information, all the briefing information. It's all the same information you'd expect to find on 1-800-weatherbrief.com. It's just been organized in a way that's a little easier to navigate on the device. It's then returned to the device and it's saved on the device. And it's saved until you refresh the briefing. So if you tap the refresh button in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll get a new briefing, but until you do that, it'll be saved on the device. And in regards to a record of the briefing, yes, there is a record. Uh, there is a record that you received a briefing first, obviously on the iPad itself. There is a record that you received a briefing on four flight servers because we received the request and we log all those, those requests. And obviously Lidos would have a, a record as well because they're serving the briefing as well. So there's actually three different parties that you can go to if there's ever a question about did I receive a briefing? Uh, those those three places are different places you can go to to look up a briefing. And we have folks who send us emails at team at fourflight.com that says, hey, can you just send me a record of this briefing I received? And uh, we can look up our logs and verify if a briefing was received. So that's no problem. Time for just a couple more questions. So two more questions to close things out. Um, number one, uh, Ryan, you've definitely struck a chord with some of the attendees tonight, and we have some interest in upgrading. Um, subscriptions. What is the easiest way for your users to upgrade their current subscription level? Cool. Um, so the easiest way to upgrade is to go to foreflight.com and, and just go to the, the buy page, um, which is at the top of the screen. And when you do that, you can enter your foreflight email address and it will then give you, it'll show you your current subscription and then it'll show you all of the additional subscriptions that you don't currently have. And so you can select the subscription that you want to upgrade to and uh, enter your payment information. And what will happen is we'll prorate you for the unused portion of your current subscription. Uh, and then we'll restart your new subscription on that day that you upgrade. Um, and that's something that folks do all the time. And it's a really, really easy. Just foreflight.com, go to the buy page, a couple, couple steps. Excellent. And finally, um, several attendees this evening are on some much older legacy devices and a lot of folks in the market for a new iPad device. So what is today's current uh, for flight advice response to anyone shopping for a new iPad? Yeah, so um, the the short there's short and long advice and I should mention you can go to foreflight.com slash buying dash guide. Foreflight.com slash buying dash guide and that's our buying guide which has all of our advice on iPads. But the short advice I would, get, I would, I would tell you is, first, choose the screen size that is mo you're most comfortable with. Because the iPad has three different screen sizes, the mini, the smallest, the air, the middle size, and then the actually four different sizes. The Pro now comes in two different sizes. I fly with the mini. I fly a Cessna uh, 172, and I, I keep it on my knee. And that's the best size for me. The application works the same on all of those iPads. Um, but in terms of the uh, capabilities, for the iPad, we recommend a minimum of 128 gigabytes of storage. All the iPads come in different levels of storage. We recommend the 128 gigabytes of storage simply because you could download all the data we have for the whole world on that device and still have lots of room for uh, photos and videos and things. And then each iPad, and this is crucial, each iPad comes in two different versions, Wi-Fi only and Wi-Fi plus cellular. And we recommend the Wi-Fi plus cellular model because that's the only model that has an internal GPS. Um, you don't have to sign up for a cellular data service to use the GPS, but you do need the cellular model to get a G to have an internal GPS. If you prefer an external GPS, you don't care about that, that, you can always get them. There's many different providers out there that have external GPSs. But again, short advice is any screen size, get the latest version of whatever the iPad is in that screen size, um, 128 gigabytes of size. And if you want an internal GPS, get the cellular model. Great advice, Ryan. Thank you. There's a lot of people shopping right now as we speak. Um, with that, we're going to close out this evening. We weren't, we, we didn't have quite enough time to get to all the questions. Um, Ryan has been gracious enough to leave the team at foreflight.com email address up on the screen that you can all see. And he also referenced that email address is a way to send any feedback that you might have requests, questions, etc. cetera. Um, fanatical customer support, as Ryan pointed out. So feel free to submit any additional questions that you may not have had answered this evening, and I'm sure the ForeFlight team would be happy to respond to those. I wish to thank everyone once again for joining us this, this evening, and a, and a big thank you 
uh, to Ryan McBride um, and the entire Four Flight team for their support and their commitment to education and training. Um, some other resources that you see up on the screen there to learn more, uh, dig in more to some of the features um, and and stay informed of, of what's of what's down the road and how to make best use of all these cool new features that you get as part of your Four Flight subscription. Reminder that all the information we presented here, it was recorded this evening, and we hope to have that uh, posted and available in the next 24 hours. You can check the Sporties YouTube channel, uh, sporties.com uh, slash webinars for our arch archive, and if you follow us on any of the social media outlets, uh, we'll be sure to post it there as well. So with that, uh, we're going to bid you a, a great evening and safe flying. Um, on behalf of Ryan McBride and the Four Flight team, my name is Eric Radke, and on behalf of Sporties and our entire team, thank you very much for joining, and we hope to see you back in an upcoming presentation. Thank you. Have a great night.